Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include What a UK referendum on the EU would mean for Australia Anti-EU sentiment increases as Britain's demand exit, poll shows End of hated wind farms that ruin our countrysides amid growing backlash over green energy We must stop the migrant invasion Voters demand effective border control Plus, MEP warns of stealth moves which could force megatrucks onto UK roads. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. British divisions over Europe have something of a Groundhog Day feel to them, even if the current Conservative rift seems like a particularly damaging instance. The stakes are high. The United Kingdom's ongoing membership of the European Union is far from assured. Australians could be forgiven for scratching their heads about what a British exit from the EU might mean. It's unclear what the knock-on effect for Australia might be, or even if there is any. But at least the question is not a new one. We have been here before. In 1975, British membership of the then European Economic Community, or EEC, seemed dire from an Australian view. It caused panic in some quarters, mainly related to changes in markets for Australian agricultural exports. As it happened, there was more than a decade between the original application in 1961 and Britain's eventual accession to the EEC in 1973. Rising anti-European Union sentiment and the threat that Britain will quit the bloc may boost nationalist candidates in next year's European Parliament elections, a poll showed. Pluralities in six countries said things are going in the wrong direction in the EU, with the majority in the UK favouring a pullout from the bloc if a referendum were held now, Gallup Europe said. EU Parliament balloting in May 2014 risks the strong mobilisation of voters in favour of radical nationalist and anti-EU parties, which could result in a drastic change in the landscape of European democracy, Gallup Europe said in a statement in Brussels today. It's a dark, frightening prospect for our dark rulers of Mordor, who dread the thought of their serfs regaining democratic control of their own futures. Ministers will call a halt today to the spread of wind farms across the countryside amid a growing public backlash over green energy. Local residents will be given far greater powers to block planning approval for wind turbines. The new measures ensure that local views will always take precedence over concerns about the global environment. David Cameron is understood to have intervened in a bitter row between Tory and Lib Dem ministers to confirm that anti-wind farm campaigners are not overruled by the environmental lobby. Well, I consider this to be at least a small breakthrough. What is really needed is the application of KISS, keep it simple stupid. We need a holistic approach to power generation, with much more impetus put into generating locally and consuming locally. A programme of micro-power generation using solar, redundant bio, yes I do mean anaerobic digestion of sewage and other waste biomass such as composting. The technologies for such systems are simple and have been well understood for decades. Wrestling back control of our borders from Brussels is the public's number one priority with regard to EU membership, a poll showed yesterday. Almost seven in ten say it must be the top of David Cameron's agenda when he renegotiates our relationship with Europe as promised. The poll comes amid mounting fears that Britain will be hit by a new surge of migrants from Romania and Bulgaria at the end of this year. The findings by pollsters' survey also indicate that most Britons would vote to leave the EU if given an immediate choice. The research is a fresh vindication of the Daily Express crusade for Britain to quit the EU. In particular, it underlines fears that Brussels is meddling in hindering our ability to control the number of foreigners who live here. 
UK Independence Party transport spokesman Mike Natras has warned that megatrucks heavier than Boeing 737-300 airplanes will menace UK roads if stealthy moves by the European Commission stick. West Midlands MEP Mike Natras, who is a member of the EU's Transport and Tourism Committee, fears 82-foot-long megatrucks weighing as much as 60 tonnes could become a reality on British roads as a result of proposed revision of the European Weights and Dimensions Regulation, Directive 9653-EU. Mr Natras has warned that this revision could pave the way for free movement of megatrucks by default over time across the whole of the EU, despite the UK coalition government pledging to not allow such vehicles to travel on British roads. Today in our video library, supporting our article on Directive 9653EU, which provisions the ability for hauliers to deploy megatrucks onto UK roads, we have this special documentary which looks into the details surrounding this issue. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+. Links to the community page are below. <laughs>